there is a new industry that is emerging that is artificial intelligence integrated software. This is going to be a industry for the next five years that's going to be very, very prosperous if you get into it. Therefore, a big question we must ask ourselves is which AI provider are we going to start leveraging in our software? When asking this question, it's important to understand the cost associated with each of these models, which model performs best depending on our use case for our software, and overall how to create a stable software platform with the emergence of these new AI providers. Welcome back y'all. Based off a video I did right here, comparing the different models in the sense of just talking to it as a chatbot, I did get requests to make this API version of this video. So that's what I'm doing here today. We're gonna look at three major AI providers and I'm not even sure industry-wise if they're called AI providers, I just like calling them that. Basically, this is just when we access artificial intelligence in the context of API and integrating into our software. This is a new wavelength here in the sense that, you know, in the last 10 to 15 years, probably longer, honestly, a big way of these companies to make a lot of money is through backend and cloud, uh, cloud providing, Google Cloud, AWS, making a ton of money there, right? But this is the next wave wavelength here. This is the next stage. There is going to be a bunch of these big companies trying to be the AI providers for the new software companies that are coming up and will be the next million, if not billion dollar company ideas. We need to know which one we should go with. This is probably as important as understanding which backend you'll go with with your software, but that'll probably be a completely different video if I ever do create it. But in this video, we're gonna dive into which API we should start accessing. First major question we gotta ask is the cost. As we know, with thousands of users, the difference between a couple extra pennies per run actually is pretty fundamental when it comes to our revenue, profit, and everything of this nature. Therefore, let's go ahead and jump over to OpenAI. Right now, GPT-4 is probably the most advanced model in the industry. A couple months from now, that might be different. A couple years from now, that might be different. But as of now, of this date, this is the most advanced model. And that's going to cost us around one penny per thousand tokens and three pennies per thousand tokens output. What this means in layman terms is think of every thousand tokens as 750 words. Scrolling down here, though, we come to GPT-3.5 Turbo, which is probably going to be the more important model to talk about in today's video as when comparing the different models when it comes to just how the output looks like and the quality, 3.5 Turbo is gonna be the best comparison when looking at Gemini and looking at Anthropic. So coming back over here, understand that 3.5 Turbo is 0 0.0005 per thousand tokens and 0 0.0015 per thousand tokens. So let's go ahead and check out the other models. This is Google's model called Gemini. We got Gemini Pro and we got Gemini Ultra. As of now, right now, we can only access API-wise Gemini Pro Gemini Pro think of being as similar to the outputs and the quality of outputs we see from 3.5. As of now, we're looking at 60 queries per minute, which actually isn't that high. And we're looking at a price of free and price output of free just because of the fact that they're training on your data. But when Google AI Studio comes out, these are the prices we're probably gonna be caring about more with the price of 0 0.00025 and then for an image generation 0 0.0025. To translate that, that's 0.00025 to 0.0005, which is just a 100% increase. So the cost associated with 3.5 compared to Gemini API is 100% more. But we're talking about fractions of pennies here, y'all. So 100% more is not a drastic impact when we're looking at scale and which model we should go with. Therefore, because we can't even access the production level API yet, which is probably going to be the pay as you go, when you're developing your software, at the current moment in the status quo, you're gonna be leaning towards OpenAI. That's gonna be one of the major things going for it as they're further developed, right? Their model is further along the track towards better and higher quality outputs. Because right now it seems like Google is in the stage of still, they're basically still learning, right? That's why it's free to use, but it's because they're training on your data. They're still learning the best way that the model can communicate in the context of API. Coming over to Anthropic, we get these prices. So Anthropic, Claude 2.1, 3.5 for GPT, same type of style input and output. I might get some hate in the comments for that. Then we get the pricing of 200,000 tokens for $8, $8 for a million tokens. What are we saying here, Anthropic? What are we saying? This doesn't make any sense. Like how much is it per a thousand token? And I did the math for y'all. The outcome is 0 0.008 or in other words, basically a penny. So every thousand tokens, you're paying a penny. The output is similar to 3.5 and we're paying only 0 0.005 here. So in a way they're kind of pricing it as if the model was as good as GBT4 Turbo. 
From my experience, the model's not there yet. Long term, it may get there. Keep that in mind. Coming back to our whiteboard here, what does that mean for us? That means this. First things first. Gemini is kind of in training right now. So we'll just put a train. This is training stage right now. I feel long term, this is going to be a very powerful API to access for artificial intelligence. But as of now, February 14th, Valentine's Day, or I guess when you see this will be a weekend. It just seems like it's in training mode. So play around with it, have some fun with it. But if you actually want to put a production level branch, software ready to go paying users, it's just not there yet. It needs more work. Anthropic. This has potential. And I'm going to describe a little instance of why it has potential in the context of production level software. As of now, though, if it's not already obvious, we're going to stick with OpenAI. Why? Because our loyalty lies with the most powerful model up to this point, which is GBT4 Turbo. And on top of that, look at the diversity when it comes to different types of models we can access for API. This is an absolute fun house when it comes to creating software. And more specifically, the one that really gets me excited, and I probably will do a software in the future that has some type of AI in this manner, is the Vision Pro or Vision Preview. This is super cool, y'all. A lot of value there. A lot of softwares can be made using this endpoint. Knowing this, if we come back to TL Draw, if we're going to go with OpenAI's API, just because of the fact that they're furthest along, long term, there may be a better comparative understanding of which one to choose. Overall, I see the advancements of every single one of these as a very positive thing for the market because as you'll notice, all the prices are getting slashed. I gen like not genuinely, but like I think in the beginning of this entire AI thing, like a year and a half ago, I was worried that as we were going to continually go down this road, pricing for accessing API was going to go get more expensive. When it first started here, it was three cents per token, but now it's one cent per token or 1,000 tokens. I was worried it was going to be like six. You know, I thought it was going to get more expensive. Well, lucky for us and lucky for capitalism, competition has lowered the prices. So you don't have to worry about cost so much as you do have to worry about the value of the output of what you're providing your end user. Therefore, go with OpenAI. Now let me go ahead and explain what I was referring to a little earlier when I said Anthropic. Why would you use Anthropic in a production level branch? Let's say we have a, some logic here. We got a pipeline. And in this pipeline, we use two prompts. One, two. In this prompts, we are using OpenAI. So we'll just say OpenAI is at O. Here's the thing. Because OpenAI is kind of standing out as the, the one that a lot of production level software is using, it's getting a lot of users or developers using it. It does have a lot of incidents in the sense that the API does go down or just becomes worse. When the API gets worse and you try to call upon it and its endpoints, you could lead to glitches, not glitches, but errors within your software because it can't do that generation or can't do the output because the endpoint is just not working. So how do we circumnavigate this at scale? We are gonna use Anthropic as an insurance. So you have two choices here or three choices or combination of choices. The way we're gonna do it is we're gonna set up the logic that OpenAI kind of provides already, which is called an exponential cool off where it will retry to the test or it will retry the endpoint from GBT's API and then just exponentially cool off every single time it gets like a you know bad request. All right, wait, chill. One minute, okay, no. Two minute, okay, no. Four minute and kind of proceed in that manner. Alternatively though, if you want to still convert on that user and you're able to prompt both these prompts perfectly, or maybe at some point in the exponential cool off, we're like, hold up, we just need to switch the model entirely. Maybe if it gets to like a cool off of an hour, we switch to a separate model. This is where Anthropic could come into play. This could be an insurance play in the sense that let's say there is a day where OpenAI's API is just absolutely killed for the endpoint. And if you're familiar with developing, you know those days, they've existed, especially like, for example, Dev Day last year, huge surge of new users, couldn't even use ChatGPT for a day. You know, this happens. It's not, it's not as occurring as it used to be, but it does happen. So we need to set up insurance. Use it so that exponential cool off. We hit an hour. Okay, let's set up a, a different type of logic here where once we hit an hour and we realize that basically this is probably going to be an issue for a couple of hours, we switch to Anthropic as our output AI prompt logic. We have to ensure that the Anthropic output is as quality as the open AI output. There you go. If you're going to develop a software as of February of 2024, 
I would suggest you learn OpenAI's API documentation and proceed in that manner. Long term, this answer may change depending on how well Gemini performs once it's kind of out of its training stage, depending on how well Anthropic performs long term and everything of this nature. There might even be more AI endpoints long term that we're not even aware of yet. So saying all that, proceed with OpenAI. Let me know what AI providers you're using in your software. Check out that playlist right there. It's from concept to software. I go over a bunch of details when it comes to creating software. That's a random video. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.